So can you guys see my screen here? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Yep. Okay, perfect, perfect. So I wanted to talk about the Yerkes Dodson law. I've been seeing a lot of people posting online or on Twitter or Instagram about how they've been super stressed lately. And I think it's just because everybody's taking step one or step two right now, or they're applying for ERAS applications. So everybody's kind of like right in the midst of a super stressful time period. And so the Yerkes Dodson law is basically finding the optimum zone of performance and balancing that with how stressed you are. And so as you see with the curve here, the more stress towards the right side of the curve, the worse your performance goes down. But if you're too calm and you don't have any kind of stress, then also your performance is down. And so you want to be somewhere in the middle here. And this is called the U-stress zone. And so you, everybody's U-stress zone is going to be a little bit different. Some people thrive better under pressure. Some people thrive better under tight deadlines. And so you have to know yourself. And so if you feel like you're burnt out, if you feel like you're not reaching the performance levels that you want when you're doing your practice questions, whether it's in school or whether it's in your fitness in the gym or whether it's with your family, whatever it is, if you're feeling burnout and you're not reaching your goals, this is a good curve to come back and think about. And so depending on where you're at on this will depend on the action you need to take. So I'm going to assume that most people are on the far right of this curve, just being in the nature of med school. So how to combat the red zone, which is your distress zone. And so everybody's going to be a little bit different, but the best things in my opinion are the simple things. And so that's stuff such as your health, your family, your sunlight, sleep, wake cycles, your nutrition, exercise, that kind of stuff. And so I always preach on this pretty much every single week about how important all these type of basic factors are for you guys. But the reason that I always bring it up is because I see so many people saying, oh, I'm going to do 10 more UWorld questions and skip the gym today. Or I'm not going to give my parents a call because I'm so stressed and I have a ton of work to do for classes. And so keep in mind, these are the things that allow you to come every single day fresh renewed and able to crush it on a day in and day out basis. So I'm not going to spend much more time talking about this because I always kind of emphasize these things for you guys, but I really want to just have that as a friendly reminder for this time period right now that everybody's super stressed at, that you can't perform your absolute best unless you're in the you stress zone. And so if you're in the distress zone, either meditate, work on your nutrition, get some sun exposure, Make sure you're going to sleep at the same time every night. Like one of my favorite tips that I always recommend to students that reach out to me is instead of a wake alarm, set an alarm of when to actually go to sleep so that you're more regimented on your going to sleep time. These are all just simple things that you guys can implement. So I'm happy to dive deeper into other methodologies, things that you guys can use, or we can jump right into any other questions. But I just wanted to start off briefly tonight talking about the Yerkes Dodson Law for you guys. So I see a few more people coming in here. Welcome, welcome. All right. With that being said, what questions do you guys have tonight? We can cover anything you want, whether it's class related, application related, biohacking, nutrition, fitness, mindset, anxiety, stress, whatever it is that you guys want to talk about. Yes, I can go first. Hi, Dr. Guys. Good to see you, as always. Yeah. So you know how we talked last week. I'm currently seven weeks away from my step two exam. Yesterday, I finished watching all your videos. I've been scoring like 70, 75% on UWorld, like the tests in the second round. I see, I saw an improvement, but I wanted to ask you like how to proceed in terms of doing the NBME because, you know, I have six weeks. I will be on a rotation until the next week and then I have two weeks off so I think I can crush it those two weeks but I do want to know like the order in which I should do them I'm kind of scared of doing like I did MBME 9 and I told you I got like a super low score I thought I was going to do better but I wanted to kind of do not like the 12 because I know that's the one that people say it's kind of more difficult I know I can get a lot from it but I want to see like a score maybe that pushes me a little bit like that makes me feel okay that I'm going through the right path so I would like to know what order should I do 
the MBMEs. I plan on taking them all and I want to do the CMS forms based on like what I get from this MBME I'm going to do this weekend. So perfect. So basically in summary here, you're scoring decently on New World. You took MBME 9, didn't get the score you wanted, and you want to discuss how to move forward with the rest of the MBMEs just to mm -hmm. kind of catch everybody up to speed here. So yeah. actually on, I believe it was June 12th, we discussed this. So I want to pull that up here. I think it'll be helpful for you. Let's see. Black sessions, June 12th. So here's some rules of thumb for the step two practice exams. So this is my basic practice test algorithm. And we'll go through this together right now. And if there's any changes we need to make, we can discuss that based upon your situation. So okay. let me just, I'll copy this into the notes for today's session. That way everybody has it for today. Okay, so obviously I always say the bare minimum is that these two MBMEs, obviously it's ideal to take all MBME practice tests. I mean, why would you not? It's basically free points. The only time that I can ever advocate for not taking them all is if you're literally back against the wall, do not have enough time to do it. Otherwise, you have to take them. So for you, I don't recommend to spend a lot of time on MBMEs one through five. The only time I'd ever revisit this in your situation is if you complete all the rest of the MBMEs, you do all the CMS forms, you finished your second pass of U World, and you're still wanting to get a higher score, then we can talk about MBMEs one through five. But I generally still wouldn't even recommend them because there's some other things that we can do to boost your score without going clear back to the trenches of the very first MBMEs back from whenever I took them. MBME 6 through 8, we can consider, but that's after you've done 9 through 14 and the CMS forms. So I'm going to say here, consider after NBMEs 9 through 14 plus CMS forms plus UWorld times two passes minimum. All right, next is, which you have already know this, I wouldn't take your MBMEs for step two if you haven't completed UWorld at least once. That's not relevant to you. You're already past that point. I recommend for most students to begin their practice test 45 to 60 days out from the exam. Within 30 days is okay for most students. I've had students as early as three months out from their exam begin NBMEs, but that's generally an anomaly. Most people obviously have rotations and time constraints, et cetera. So you're basically right in that time frame. So you're perfectly fine here. So you can take your first NBME, which you did, which is nine, which is one of the harder ones. 12 is also one of the harder ones. And so you already know that, which I think is totally fine. And so here, what you can do is during the second pass of your U-World, you can break it into segments and take a practice test at each segment. Basically, every six to 700 questions, you can take another MBME. I think that you have an adequate amount of time to actually follow this recommendation. You have six to seven weeks here, so you'll be fine in that regard. And this is super key here that I want to emphasize. Don't let MBME 9 sway you on how you feel. And I tell everybody this every year. Don't let a singular practice test feel like it's going to predict your performance. Don't let it throw you off. It happens. Everybody has a bad day and some of the practices are just innately harder than others. And once the NBME publishes these score reports and these score guidelines, they don't really change them based upon students in subsequent years. So even if it seems fair when they release it, sometimes it's more difficult for later years. Sometimes it's easier for later years. It just depends. Like imagine before Sketchy came out, all the micro questions probably weighted people's scores down tremendously. And then Sketchy came out. And then now those questions are essentially free points for step one. And so the scoring gets extremely biased. And so keep that in mind with the older MBMEs. And so that's one of the reasons why I don't recommend MBME one through five as much. The other recommendation why not to use those is because they're essentially at the phase where some of the questions are starting to get outdated. And so... I even see this actually with some of the CMS forms. Some of the older CMS forms are starting to get slightly outdated, but for all intents and purposes, they're still amazing to use, and I recommend everybody to take them. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If you see any kind of contradiction with the answer choices of what you've studied versus what you're seeing on a practice test, don't just take it with a take that as the Bible. Essentially, you still want to basically see, okay, where were they coming from with this? Like one of the recommendations that has changed from year to year is osteoarthritis first line treatment. It used to be some of the resources would say Tylenol, like acetaminophen, and others would say ibuprofen, like an NSAID. And so depending on the year that you actually go through the question is depending on what the resource will say is the correct answer. And so questions like that, 
generally I don't stress about and I don't have my students stress about that because if there's any kind of incongruence with what the generally widely accepted guidelines say, those are usually either going to be test questions on your actual USMLE or they'll get thrown out because there's clearly not a correct answer based upon the amount of students that are picking one thing or another. So don't let these things really slow you down in your progress, but definitely take it with a grain of salt. I always tell students to try to avoid taking UWorld self-assessments within one to two weeks or your actual USMLE. They're not the same style as the NBMEs and seeing new questions that you've never seen before that are not like your actual USMLE will be can be very stressful to a lot of people. So I recommend to get those out of the way first for most people. And this recommendation has actually changed over the years. I actually used to recommend taking UWorld self-assessment too within the last week of your prep because it was the most predictive back maybe like five years ago, but they've started to fall off in terms of how useful they are. Just treat them essentially as any other UWorld questions you would. You learn from it, you use it to actually understand the material rather than to necessarily test yourself and you go on. That's basically how you need to think about these UWorld self-assessments. And so if you look back into some of my old content, literally from like four or five years ago, you'll see that this order and recommendation has changed. I'll take that with a grain of salt. This is what I most commonly recommend nowadays though. So like I said, get the UWorld self-assessments out of the way first. You've taken MBME 9, so that's perfect. The, the next first one, I did the UWorld self-assessment 1. Okay. But seriously, I do give you... I mean, I don't think the MBME questions like that at all. I mean, I thought yeah. it was so hard. So like I said, take all the UWorld self-assessments with a grain of salt. You said you were wanting to avoid a really hard next test to kind of just keep your momentum going, which I totally understand. So obviously I would avoid MBME 12. I usually have people get it out of the way earlier on, which is still fine for you to get it done maybe as your next test or two yeah. tests for I mean, I do want to do it early because I want to learn from it. And I know mm -hmm. it's a good one to learn from, but I want to like boost myself a little. So I wouldn't yeah. like to be the next one. Absolutely. So I would take one of the UWorld self-assessments to basically just knock those out and get them done with, because you have to take them anyway. And you'd rather backload your actual NBMEs closest to your real test because they're the most representative. There's going to be the most carryover between concepts and they're obviously going to be the most realistic to what you see on test day. So I would personally, if I were you, take US UWorld self-assessment next and just get it done with. And then once you're done with the UWorld self-assessments, you just got to bite the bullet and take MBME 12. That's what I would personally do. But you, you just got to know going into it that a lot of students find it tough. Sometimes there's a 10 point drop, 15 point drop from one day to the other with that, but don't worry about it. Golden rule here is I definitely want you to still allocate time for the rest of the NBMEs once you're done here. 100% without a doubt. And then these CMS forms, like I always talk about, they're super valuable. 50 questions, 44 CMS forms total. You have over 2,000 additional MBME level questions. I personally find the CMS forms to be slightly easier than the MBMEs. That's me personally. Some students maybe don't feel the same, but I mean, I've obviously went through all of these and this is kind of a common trend that I found is if you look percentage-wise to percentage-wise, like say you're scoring 75% on your NBMEs, maybe you score 80% on the CMS forms. So it's just marginally easier in my opinion. So what I have people do is if you really need to boost your knowledge base and like not kill your confidence, it's actually sometimes really useful to get the CMS forms done before diving into more NBMEs. So CMS forms can be used to build your confidence plus review the highest yield concepts. And a lot of the CMS forms will actually have some overlap, which is nice. So it almost forms its own spaced repetition of some of the concepts. Like you might see rheumatoid arthritis asked on two or three different CMS forms. And that's really helpful because it's like, okay, now I finally got this down pat. Or you might see like multiple sclerosis asked on multiple of the neuro forms, for example. And so some of these like heavy hitting diseases, like if you guys go to the secret archives here and let's see, where is it? Go to the NBME top things to know, then go to the 73 highest concepts. 
Like these are the things you're going to see over and over and over again on all the CMS forms. So like stuff like gout versus pseudo gout or PCOS or end stage liver disease, diverticulitis, like all these things, they just get tested ad nauseum. So if you don't know them, it's basically free points that you're losing going into your test. So anytime you see, like what I recommend to do is just like scan through this list here before you start going through practice tests. And if you see these concepts show up on the practice test, you obviously need to know it because I put it here because it's not something that gets asked once or twice. It's asked every single year, multiple, multiple times. And so just use this as a general framework in your mind before you dive into it. And it should save you a lot of time and effort. And so, like I said, the CMS forms can build your confidence and you can review the highest yield concepts in a spaced repetition format. Some students prefer to do the CMS forms before tackling a ton of NBMEs if they want to boost their scoring to be greater than 75%. Because like, let's say that you take an NBME and you score a 65%. It's going to take you literally all day to review it because there's just so many questions you missed and there's so much stuff to review that you don't know. Whereas if you average 75% or more on your CMS forms, you can bring your NBME average up pretty quickly because there will be carryover between the concepts. And plus they're simply easier questions. And oftentimes they're shorter question stems, more to the point. And they're a little bit more clear for kind of like a beginner level status. And so they can help you boost your score pretty quickly if you want to do that. That's one option. Other students use the CMS forms to review every major concept right before the exam after they've completed the NBMEs. I don't think either way is right or either way is wrong. If I was to go back in time and this is like back in time, like six, seven years ago now and had to take my step two, I would actually consider taking the CMS forms after you take one NBME, see where your NBME scores at, check it percentage by block. And if you're scoring on average less than 75% for your blocks, I would actually just go ahead and do all 2000 CMS form questions as my next bat, because that's going to really speed up your progress and still knock out an additional 2000 reps. So then when you hit your next NBME, you're for sure going to be scoring a minimum of five to 15 points higher because you've just seen 2000 more questions. And so I'm going to say right here, this is what I would do after I take one NBME if I scored less than 75% per block on the NBME. So this is kind of, if I was in your guys' shoes, this is what I would do. So okay. that's kind of like the, the nitty gritty and time, time conservative approach doing all this, because obviously you need to get it all done, but you don't want to miss out on the 2000 CMS questions, but it will speed up your NBME progress simultaneously. So that's kind of how I think about it. Does that help? Yeah, perfectly. Thank you.